Pokey Pokey by Jerry Spinelli. Night. All night long, seven sisters whisper and giggle, and then all together, they rush Orion the Hunter and tickle him. And Orion the Hunter laughs so hard he shakes every star in the sky, not to mention Moon Cow, who loses her balance and falls. Paloop into the Big Dipper, which tip tip tips and dumps Moon Cow into the Milky Way. And Moon Cow laughs and splashes and rolls on her back and goes floating down, down, down Milky Way. And she laughs a great moon moon laugh and kicks at a lavender star. And the star goes shooting across the sky, up the sky and down the sky. A lavender snow fireball, down the high night, down, 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 down. Today, Jack, to Hokey Pokey, where it lands, a golden bubble now, a starborn bead lands so and softly pips upon the nose of sleeping Jack and spills a whispered word, it's, and then another, time. Something is wrong. He knows it before he opens his eyes. He looks. His bike is gone. Scramjet. What more could he have done? He parked it so close that when he shut his eyes to sleep, he could smell the rubber of the tires, the grease of, on the chain. And, she's, and still she took it. His beloved scramjet. He won't say her name. He never says her name. Only her kind. Sneers it to the morning star. Girl. He runs to the rim of the bluff, looks up the tracks, down the tracks. There she is ponytail flying from the back of her baseball cap. The spokes of the wheels, his wheels, plum spun in the thistle down dawn. He waves his fists, shouts from the bluff, I'll get you! The tracks curve, double back. He can cut her off. He sneaker skis down the gullied red clay snow slope, leaps the tracks, plunges into the jungle, and runs. Plute! into a soft, vast, pillowy mass. Oh no, not again! He only thinks this. He cannot say it because the front half of himself, including his face, is buried in the hippopotamoid belly of Wanda Monster. This has happened before. He wags his head hard, throws it back, and thuk, his face comes free. Wanda! He bellows, wake up! Wanda stirs in the bed of May apples. Wanda! The moment Wanda awakes, her monster vanishes in a puff of apricots, drop flopping Jack to the ground. He's up in an instant and off again. Every other step is a leap over a sleeper. All is quiet save thunder beyond the trees and the thump of the sun bumping the underside of the horizon. He hop rocks across the creek, past the island of the forget of Forbidden Hut, and pulls up, huffing at the far end, loop end of the tracks. He looks up. He looks down. Nothing. He slumps exhausted to the steel rail. He stares at his sneaker tops. He gasps, reflects. She said she would do it. I'm going to take... No, to be accurate, she didn't say take. She said ride. I'm going to ride your bike. And who knows? Maybe if she had said it nicely, maybe if she wasn't a girl... But she is a girl, and she said it with that snaily smirk. But there was no way she was ever coming within ten long spits of his bike. But she did. And he hates her. He hates her for taking the thing that he loves most in this world. But maybe even more, he hates her for being right. He pushes himself up on the rail. Once more, he casts forlorn eyes up and down the tracks that no train travels. He cries out, Scramjet! This is too painful to bear alone. From the black tar pit of despair, he rips his Tarzan yell and hurls it into the jungle and over the creek and across the dreamlands of Hokey Pokey. A small brown bird flies over the mountains, spreads its tiny wings high above Hokey Pokey, and rides the riptide of Drax's despair. Over fl flowers and the wall and the mutter of bad words in jailhouse sails of the call of Tarzan. Over snuggle stop and tattooer and tantrums and stuff. Veering wide around socks over thousands puddles and doll farm and trucks. Over the great plains and the wild herd flies Jack's lament. 
over sleepers, sleeping, and monsters monstering, and all the badlands and good lands of Hokey Pokey to the ever-listening ears of Jack's best pals, La, La Joe and Dusty, amigos. Dusty has slept in his favorite spot, under the outstretched monumental arm of the kid. Le Joe, who, like most hokey po pokers, sleeps where he drops, has bunked in the flowers. Both here at the same moment. Both here more than the usual morning call. Both here pain. Both here help. Up from the ground into the saddles, homing in on the sound waves. Tracks. Far side bend. Pounding pedals. Gravel flying. Together returning the yodeling call. Coming! Destroyer. If you want to go long, you can call him most amazing, terrible ever destroyer of worlds. If you want to go sh short, call him destroyer. But don't call him short. And don't call him Harold Peter Br Bitterman Jr. It is the return Tarzan call that awakens destroyer. He has spent the night, as always, high in the remote-controlled super scoop of his cherry red eight-wheeled Mark X Bulldogger dump truck, Hokey Pokey's biggest toy. He lazes on his back. The high, thin clouds look like a truck exhaust tinged with pink. A brown bird flies overhead. He wishes he had a stone. He catches a whiff of apricots and jerks fully awake, sits up. This is the day. He hopes he's not too late. He peers over the edge of his high hoist. His kingdom sprawls below him. He spots a dust ball rolling across the plains. Here and there, a monster dissolves in a pale yellow puff, but most are still there hovering over their dopey little sleepers. He's got to move fast. He grabs the remote, punches down. With a click and jerk, the great red cradle stirs, swings, lowers him slowly to the ground. He punches the remote. Super Scoop returns to its up spot. He dashes around to the cab, jumps in, plants his feet on the pedals. Wait, clothespin, does he have it? He feels into his pocket. Yes, okay, move. He pushes, right foot, left foot, churns, churns, Bulldogger lumbers off. Amigos. Two sides of an arrowhead. Two bikes come to a point at Jack, slum sitting on the rusty rail. Lejo, Dusty, glance about. Where's, said Dusty. Scramjet, says Lejo. She stole it, says Jack. He doesn't have to say who she is. Glove too, says Lejo. Jack hasn't even thought of his baseball glove, looped over the handlebar of the bike. Where he goes, the glove glows. He nods heavily. They cannot speak. They do not know Jack without his bike. Things have shifted. They dismount. Jack pulls up his shirt and pretends to wipe sweat from his face. But really, even though he wants them here, he doesn't want to be seen. Lejo stares in shock. Is about to say something, clears his throat, says something else. You crying? Jack springs, shoves Lejo backward. Lejo's bike clatters to the ground. Do I look like I'm crying? Did you ever catch me crying? Jack kicks Lejo's bike tire. Glares, dares him to do something about it. He turns to Dusty. Did you? Dusty flashes a V-finger peace sign. Hey, not that I ever saw. Jack is in his face. Not that you ever saw? What's that mean? You never saw me, but somebody else did? Poking him in the chest? Huh? No, man. Dusty puts up his hands as if Sheriff caught. I ain't saying that. You never... You just ain't a crier, Jackaroonie. Everybody knows that. Jack gives Dusty's bike a kick and scuffs down the tracks. Stops, sags, shows them his back. Dusty calls. Scramjet. He was a great one, amigo. Right, LJ? Yeah, says Lejo. Jack is silent still. Then says something they cannot hear. Both call, what? Jack wheels. What do you mean, was? Lejo straddles his fallen bike. Hey, man. Dusty rushes forward, laughing too loud. See, see, amigo. What, what's this was stuff? We just got to go get it back, is all. He punches Jack's arms. He gives a sneery laugh. Ain't no was. He spits in the dirt, gives Jack another punch. Jack returns the punch. A grin peeks over the edge of his scowl. I know where she'll head, he says. Dusty yips like a puppy. Yeah, where? Jack pulls LeJo's bike to its feet. He mounts the rear fender. He looks from one to the other. 
Gorilla Hill, he says. And in their eyes and growing grins, he sees the truth of it. Gorilla Hill. Two bikes. Three amigos crunch the cinders back along the looping rails to the off-track sides of the bluff, Gorilla Hill. They stow the bikes in the brush at the foot. Hurry, says Jack. They lean into the hard, yellow, mica-flecked trail. It's downhill heaven, but uphill hell. The sweat and the sun on LeJo's brown skin give his forehead the sparkle of a root beer hokey-pokey. Jack's hatred grows with every step, every thigh-crunching reminder of his shame. This epic, this magnificent hill is for riding down, not walking up. Suddenly, up ahead, beyond the low bend, up out of the glittering sky itself, a voice. Yeehaw! Dusty cries. She's coming! Off the trail, barks Lejo. They cannot see yet, but they can hear. The chittering chain and axles, the stone-pocked crunch of rubber, the thief's crazed scream unfurling. They can feel the speed. Feel it accelerate with every wheel turn. Feel the hill snuffle and grin and stiffen its spine. Feel the air split like a snapped stick as into the bow bend they lean. Yee! Now, cries Dusty. Holy crap, cries LeJo. And out of the bow bend they come as the sun last thrusts its bristling fist into the sky and blinds the boys to all but the high sonic scream of the chain song and a hissing shadow blur of steed and she-demon blasting out of the sunfire. Ha-ha! Scramjet! Jack cries, but his voice is already a hole in the afterwind. In the time, the amigos stagger onto the trail, blinking, shading their eyes. Already bike and rider are a flying speck halfway to the Great Plains. They appear to be one. Stunned, silent, the boys begin their grim descent. They avoid each other's eyes. Beneath their sneaker soles, the trail is warm. The air smells of girl and burnt rubber. Jubilites. Churns. No hands. Across the Great Plains, whooping and laughing, scattering the wild herd of bikes in fright of dust and spitting stones. The thrill, the exhilaration of a, the downhill dive, the free fall of it, the uncontrol, the flight she has never known before. The handlebar dips, veers to the left, feeling the pull of the old herd. Oh yes, she thinks, how wonderful to be wild again, racing dust devils across the plains. Should she let the beast go, rejoin the herd? Should she? No, maybe someday, but not now, not yet. There is only the thrill, the power, the speed. And no more scramjet, no more he. No, she shouts full voice over the flatlands. She jacks her elbows, leans forward till the tire spins inches below her face. The prairie a weedy blur. Hazel, she whispers. You are, she straightens, shouts. Hazel! She giggles at her own brillness. Brilliance. She knows the name Hazel is dumb, but her opinion doesn't matter. What matters is his opinion, the boys, the germs. When he hears what she's renamed his pride and joy, oh, she wishes she could be there to see it. She shouts. Hazel, Hazel, Hazel. She wishes there was somebody to celebrate with, to high five, but there is only herself and Hazel and the wild wheeled Mustangs. So she gives Hazel her head and high fives, high tens, the morning sky.